La France rêvée, la France passée, mais jamais oubliée. La France rêvée, la France passée, mais jamais Hello, everybody. Sorry about the false start. How are you all today? You can't talk because you're muted anyway, but the thoughts out there, I hope you're well. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Dennis Daly here. I'm going to confess, Dennis, I can't even pronounce what you do. Qigong? Qigong. It's spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G. And it's pronounced qi gong or qi gong. And what is it exactly? It is Chinese breathing, simplest. So it's not a martial simplest arts. See, I thought it was martial arts. It's related to martial arts. Is it okay? Qi it is used by martial artists. I mean, my teacher was a martial artist as well as a as a teacher of qi gong. And do you have a practice every single day? I mean, do you like? Yeah, I do. Okay, so it's not. It's is it like a like people that do yoga? Is it something you sit down on a mat and do, or a breathing exercises? Or, or you stand up, and there's also seated meditation as well. Okay, I will. Everyone, Dennis is he's an accomplished narrator. He's a producer. Um, he's got his own company, and he's also a qigong instructor. And he reached out to me when we very first started Joe saying, would you, because I'd made a joke about meditation on Facebook, as I tend to do right before my espresso jokes. And he reached out to me and said, you know, if you need more information, I said, yeah, 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 thanks. <laughs> and as I do, because to me, meditation has always been, they're going to make me sit still until I have a panic attack and run from the room. And I read some of the stuff that Dennis sent me and it's, and I like the way he has an intellectual approach to meditation. So I don't feel like I have to just sit and be Zen, which I don't think is possible in my case. And so Dennis is going to explain a little bit more to us about, about this meditation and Qigong and the breathing practice and give us a few exercises in the course of this call. And hopefully it will help us connect to our breath work in narration and also just be calmer, happier human beings. And then also we've got a bit of an insomnia hack that Dennis is going to, he's kindly said that he'll share with you because it's not something you do on the call, but it's something you can take away with you and you can do for the rest of your life. Not that any of you are up late at night, obviously my fellow narrators. Dennis, over to you. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. It is morning here, very early morning. Um, is it like four or after, three in the morning or something over there? It is four o'clock in the morning. Wow. Wow. We are honored to have you. Thank you for waking up. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. And thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Okay. Meditation is a real buzzword. It's a thing that everyone thinks they should do. And there are lots of books about it, lots of people teaching it. And overall, it's a very good thing. My experience in it, uh, way back in 1968, I read a book called Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. And that introduced me to meditation. I was actually involved with that group for several years and learnt their meditation techniques. In 2000, and one, I became interested in Qigong, and I studied with three different masters doing that. And meditation is also an aspect of Qigong, a very important aspect of it. Uh, I've also done other forms of meditation. I attended a, a seminar convened by Joe Dispenser, of whom you may have heard, who's a motivational self-help teacher. He incorporates his particular version of meditation in his work as well. So is Joe, uh, sorry to interrupt Dennis, but isn't Joe the one that says that like you learn your body learns pain and remembers it? You become addicted to uh, bad feelings to that's pain. That's right. He, he's big on the, the issue of addictions. Yeah. 
that you actually become addicted to the sensations of your own body and you assume that that is really the way the world works and that gets in your way. And essentially, I, I agree with that. The fact that if you do something well, it means you've got to have your own way. You know, like watching Roger Federer play tennis. I mean, there's a man who just gets out of his own way and just lets it happen. Mm, good point. Um, so what, what is meditation? And how did it come to be? Well, you know, we're told by various people that man is the apex of creation. He's the smartest and the best and most powerful of all animals. Maybe, maybe not. And that's because he thinks and he plans. Well, that's actually not very accurate because animals are also very good at thinking and planning in certain limited aspects. But what man does, man reflects on things. Man has the capacity to stand aside and look at things as from a third person perspective. And that's really where meditation comes in. So it's a method of uh, dynamic introspection. And the aim is that there's an integration of the person seeing, the object seen, and the process of actually seeing it. So it all gets wrapped into one. So it's not a state of mind, but it's an activity. And it involves your body. It's not purely mental. It involves tuning your body so you can develop this sort of awareness. And it's a process through which you gain a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of the world around you. It does involve concentration, but concentration itself is not meditation. It's an element of it, but you obviously need it as you need, would need for anything. You know, if you're playing a game of tennis or narrating an audio book, you obviously need to concentrate on what you're doing. What's the difference okay. between mindfulness and meditation? We're going to get to that. Okay, sorry, I'm jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, meditation has become really popular and there are lots of different styles of meditation, lots of activities which people call meditation, which perhaps in the past wouldn't have been called meditation. Now, the first one, as Daniela referred to, is pure observation or mindfulness, best known as or known by the Vipassana style of meditation. Now, what that is, that drives a lot of people crazy because what it is, is just pure observation. You sit there and you observe. Whatever. If your mind's going crazy, you observe that. If your mind is quiet, you observe that. You know, if, you, if your shoulder's itching, you observe that. Now, the problem with Vipassana is that a lot of people jump into it they go to a seminar where you do it for six hours a day for a period of 10 days. I know people some have never done people. any, have, ne have never sat still for, you know, more than five minutes at a time and it can drive people crazy. Have you ever done that? No, no. I mean, it's equivalent to saying I want to become a marathon runner. So tomorrow I'll go out and I'll start running 26 miles a day. You know, you, you can <laughs> ease into it. Okay, so that's mindfulness. Um, it's great if you can do it in short spurts, but it's sort of the thing you can forget to do as well. So if you're, one, walk, if you're mindful of things like going on, like you're mindful of what you're eating and you're mindful as you're walking down the street and you're trying to remind yourself throughout the day, hmm. is that not meditating? I mean, is it only meditating can, if you're can, sitting still and... It can be moving meditation. I um, mean, there's a, a famous story about a Zen master who was asked, you know, um, what's the, the secret of your practice of Zen? And he said, three good meals a day and a sound sleep at night. And the questioner said, well, doesn't everyone do that? And he said, no, not at all. He says, when they're eating, their minds are distracted and their digestion is upset by all sorts of random thoughts. And when they're sleeping, they have these terrible dreams which torment them. Um, there's an a incident I, I read about Thich Nhat Hanh, the famous Buddhist monk who lectures a lot on peace, that someone said one of the sort of important experiences of their life is they saw this fellow walking across a garden 
and as though they'd never seen anyone walk before because he was just so so there and he was just walking across the garden so yeah i mean that's mindfulness but if, if it gets very stressful really if you, mindful, it, so it gets I, very I, stressful you think i've got to be mindful you know i'm not mindful enough you can but you get but you're saying that big the, the, what you're describing with that guy is presence. So if you get Absolute really, presence, really yeah. mindful, then your presence in the booth, you'd be knocking oh, it absolutely. out of the ballpark. If you could be, yes, that's right. Yeah. But, but as, soon, as soon as a thought comes in the booth, gee, this is a long book, will I ever manage it? Um, or you start criticizing yourself. Oh, I tried that accent and it was dreadful, you <laughs> know. <laughs> I'm, fe I'm feeling, oh, gee, I'm hungry, you know. I could really kill a few donuts now. I've got seven more pages to go at 1.2 yeah, seconds you per day. Know, <laughs> you know, um, it's three hours since I had a cup of coffee, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that's the problem with mindfulness. It's a, In principle, it's excellent. You should apply it to everything you do. But if you're doing it by itself, it's really, really challenging. Right. And also you don't get much sense of progress because you think, you know, the more I try to do this, the more crazy my mind gets, the faster it goes, the more distracted I seem to get. So it's not like a muscle that you can build with practice then? Well, if you're determined, you can. Yeah, it's the hard way to do it. Okay, sorry. Moving yeah. on to the next one, which I put as mantra meditation or prayer, like transcendental meditation. Um, or chanting of Buddhist sutras or that sort of thing, or even, even saying the rosary, you know, because that's very repetitive. It's just a continuous chant puts you in a certain space because your mind gets bored and then it gets sort of numb. And so it inhibits the thinking process. So you get into a sort of, you know, relatively stable psychological state. Oh, I like, like a flow. Yeah. Um, now, the third one is the guided meditation. It's like the Joe Dispenser one, which are, in fact, guided. You know, you get CDs or you download audio, and it's, it's very noisy, and there's lots of instructions, and there's lots of suggestions about um, a, a lot of visualizations, and you invite you to immerse yourself in this experience very deliberately. Um, it can be very uh, exciting, very entertaining, but it doesn't leave you with the sense of a lot of peace afterwards. I mean, you can feel really charged up. But it's very popular because it's, you know, um, sometimes it's a bit like going to a rock concert. You can get really, really stimulated. Uh, now, the fourth one is what we're looking at is neurophysical techniques. This is where you coordinate breathing and visualization. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Because this is stuff which acts on your body and calms your mind and produces inevitably a sense of inner calm, not just inner calm, but inner sort of delight. You feel comfortable being in your own skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so the results of meditation practice, if you're persistent with it, you'll feel calmer, obviously. You'll feel less troubled by stuff in your world, stuff which used to upset you will upset you less. It'll seem less, less significant. So you'll be less of a drama queen. <laughs> oh, absolutely. The other thing is that, and most of us are really troubled by our past history. You know, we all have trauma in the past. It's very significant to us. It might be significant to other people, but it's significant to us because we're, um, and that, that drives a lot of our internal processes that affects our digestion, our health. We get, locked into these very um these circuits of thinking where we we get focused on particular thoughts being significant um 
neurophysical meditation actually loosens that grip. So you can look at these things and say, well, you know, that was then, this is now, you know, it helps you leave stuff in the past. There are other techniques like um, neuralistic linguistic programming, which really aims to do that. But um, in a sense, they're cheats. It's a matter of just using your mind to achieve that. Whereas this meditation will reduce the impact on the body. You won't register those strong. Um, the impressions won't be so strong. They won't be so dominating as they would be um, if you're just trying to come with your mind. You know, it's like the person who says, don't panic. Or what are you going to do? You're most likely to panic, aren't you? It's yeah. <laughs> That's why when you're having a panic attack, the first thing they say to do is breathe. Well, yeah. Now, the thing with breathing is that there are a lot of uh, automatic processes in your body which you can't control. Like your digestion, you can't really control your digestion. Your heart rate, you can't control that. Pain reflexes, you can't directly control them breathing you can regulate to a degree i mean you can't stop yourself breathing you can't hold your breath until you die but you can regulate the flow of your breath and in chinese medicine the breath is very in intimately linked to the inner flow of energy and inner uh, emotional states of the body i mean that can be a subject for a whole another call <laughs> all that but i don't want to get sidetracked by that but what we should do is practice the breathing and see what effect it has now i'm not going to promise what effect it'll have on you right but general experience is that most people do benefit by this they feel calmer they feel more centered more relaxed in themselves Okay, so the Qigong breathing is abdominal breathing. It's all I'm about your time. losing your sound a tiny bit. Is there any chance? Yeah, sorry to do that because it puts you in an that's, awkward That's position. all right, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, it's abdominal breathing. Now, people who have done yoga have heard all about their complicated series of breathing, and it can be quite stressful if you're trying to do it the yoga way, filling up your lungs in stages and that sort of thing. Yeah. The Qigong breathing, you don't worry about that. All you do is you inflate your tum as you breathe in. You don't worry about filling the top of the lungs. Um, the body will take care of that. Now, in this Qigong style, there are five styles of breathing. We're just going to do two of them, okay. um, which are very simple. You breathe through your nose, easy enough. And with the in-breath, you don't... The other aspect, uh, aspects of the breath, you apply a count, but not for your in-breath. So just breathe in, you just allow your tongue to inflate. So everyone can do that. So, and you've got enough breath. The body, will, the body will provide enough breath for you. You don't have to worry about that. So you don't count when you breathe in. You just breathe into your you stomach. Do not, you, just, you just allow the, the body to, to, to pull the air in, okay, and allow the, the stomach to inflate. We've got a hand up there. Yeah, I think you said something about our tongues should be in a certain place, and you said it so yeah. quickly, beautiful accent. I didn't understand it. <laughs> oh, I missed it entirely. <laughs> the tongue. Uh, Thanks, Blair. <laughs> where should it be? Okay. When, when you're not... Um, while your mouth's closed, the tongue should be rolled up and it should be on the roof of your mouth. So if everyone can do that, just roll up your tongue and lay it on the roof of your mouth. So the bottom of your tongue is touching the top of your mouth? Mm-hmm. Now what this does is it, um, it links what's called the inner orbit, which is an energy, um, an energy channel which runs up your spine and down the front of your body. And that links the crown point, which is the top of your head, with the rest of your body. Okay. Also gets rid of the turkey neck. 
<laughs> I mean, added vote benefit, you know, just sorry, I will I mean, stop distracting. <laughs> The thing is, uh, I'm glad Blair raised this. I mean, if you're in a stressful situation, even rolling the tongue up and putting it against the roof of your mouth for a bit, you'll find will take the edge off things a bit. Okay. <clears throat> so the first style of breathing I want everyone to practice is called chewy, which is a blowing breath. So you um, inhale through the nose, always inhale through the nose. You hold for four counts and then you blow out for six. So it's inhale, hold. You blow out your mouth. You blow out your mouth and then you hold your lungs empty for two counts. So if everyone wants to try that just a few times, just to get the feeling of it. So four time, in, but... hold four in, no, no, hold no, for no, two. No, no, no. In's in's not counted. Oh. In just breathe in. So breathe in, in, hold for hold two. For four, for, for, hold, hold for four. Hold for four. Blow out for six. And your tongue's hold oh. empty for two. And oh, then when okay, the tongue, okay. And then okay. and then when the mouth's closed, the tongue goes up to the top of the mouth again. Obviously, your tongues, you unravel your tongue when you're blowing out. So, if everyone wants to try that just a few times. Okay. Now, um, there are essentially two, two, I mean, everything in Chinese medicine's yin and yang. This is a yin style of breathing. And for people in our Western lifestyle, yin is good because our lives are incredibly yang. We're so driven. You know, it's all about achievements, all about goals. It's all about getting there, getting air ahead of someone else. Um, yang energy is essential but if you're yang all the time you just get burnt out and incredibly stressed yin is the nourishing sort of energy and that's what you should what you need to focus on more yin is also where the pleasure centers get activated the what the pleasure centers in your body get activated well, that would explain in the, in, the in cycle. <laughs> the, the natural that would explain my cycle. life. <laughs> okay, so you've got the breathing. The breathing. So I want to increase, add this to an exercise, which is the water element. Water is one of the five elements. I think you've done sessions on the five elements, haven't you, with Griffin? Oh yeah, with Griffin. That quest, question. So that exercise you just taught us. With like the breathing style, yeah. Morning, night. You can do it any time. Before you record, really? Okay. Any time, yeah. You can do as much the, as you like. And the more you do it, the better you'll get, and then like the healthier you'll be. The more natural it'll become. Okay. You can do it. The thing is, also, you can do it while driving your car. It won't send you to sleep. Because I mean, you're still moving your mouth. Mouth. You you're actively involved in your respiration. It, it won't induce sleep. Okay. But if you're Afflicted with road rage, it can certainly calm you down. Okay. 
Okay, we've got we've got the breathing. So we're going to do water element. Water element, you can do it sitting down. As you breathe in, you raise your arms. As you blow out, you lower them. Hold for two, breathe in, blow out. The, is it the same count, like blow out to the count same, of six? Same count. Okay. Okay, you may start to feel the energy flowing through and past your hands as you lower the. Yeah. So what does again, that, do? that it's it's a bit complicated. It's 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 the water element. It actually water element relates to your kidneys, where you store all your stress, and it actually relieves a lot of that inbuilt stress. Well, that's good. Again, you can do as much water element as you like. Um, with the yang exercises, there are yang exercises and yang forms of meditation, which you have to um, be fairly careful about that you don't overdo them. Is that with one a yin, yang one? No, that's a yin one. That's a yin one. Okay. All, all we're looking at is yin exercises this morning. Okay. The yang ones are a lot more complicated and need to be regulated a lot more so you don't overdo them. Okay, because do they? If you overdid them, would they affect your nervous system? Oh yeah, you'd get really wound up and send your blood pressure up. Um, yeah. For example, I knew a woman who um, she she was a marathon runner. She was uh, very aggressively into sports, and uh, she did the Yang exercises so much because she wanted to toughen herself up. But she actually stopped menstruating, so it's you know it, it really can interfere if it's not regulated. Yeah. It can interfere with your uh, the way your body's supposed to work. With the yin, you can do as much as you like. You do know I'm so going to Google Yang exercises after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so that's that's the, that's the water element. That's all there is to it. Okay. I mean, if you're doing it standing, there are a few other points uh, which we can look at it some other time but you can do that exercise standing or sitting okay. and you'll find it will calm you down and it'll have that function of taking you one step away from something that's actually bothering you in the moment okay okay um so if you take anything away from the session if that's what you take away the fact that you can step away there's a physical practice you can do we'll step away and then you look at something and you think hmm yeah, there's a way around that, or maybe it's not so bad after all. And you could do that before going in to record, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely. With that ground, is that what do you, what yeah. would you say would be the best meditation for grounding yourself and centering yourself? Well, we're going to do actually guided meditation um, in a bit, okay, as time permits, which will get more complicated. Um, I mean, anything on this call. I'm happy to write it out and send you detailed instructions about how to do it. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the water element and the, the blowing type of breath. Now the insomnia hack people were interested in. Anyone here have trouble sleeping? Yes. Okay. We can't do this because you've got to lie down to do it. I have detailed instructions for it. I'll describe it. Now you've got the breathing. Okay, essentially. To do this, you lie down. 
you um you raise your legs by putting your calves up on a pillow or a chair so your legs and your feet are raised above the rest of your body okay um it's Dennis, usually good to I'm have a, posting a pillow. this on the group afterwards. Dennis has said I can yep. post this on the group so you yep. can read the instructions. Sorry, go ahead, Dennis. Okay, so you've got the count uh, for the breath. You apply the same count. Just inhale, hold for four, blow out for six, hold your lungs empty for two. As you... All the work is done during the exhale, right? As you exhale you start to tilt your toes towards your forehead, okay? And you also tighten the anal sphincter as you're exhaling. Those two points are important. As you inhale, you relax. You relax everything. So the toes go back. You start to exhale, you pull the toes towards the head, tighten the anal sphincter again, and repeat this. Ideally, you should do it for 30 minutes. Because 30 according minutes? To Chinese med, 30 minutes. Okay. Or you can do it for more if you want. Um, it's actually 28 minutes. But route it up to 30. Um, the reason for that is that, according to Chinese medicine, the energy competes a circuit in your body every 28 minutes. It's a natural oh, cycle. I like that. So it's... Um, yeah, something about the number 30, perhaps, you know, 30 days in a month, whatever. Um, but anyway, it's 28 minutes seems to be significant in this regard. Now, um, when's your 28 minutes going to be up? How are you going to count it? Well, you don't need to. What I suggest you do is you get some sort of fairly gentle meditation type music. Um, download it or stream it from from youtube and have a 38 30 minute segment of this so that'll be your timer when the music stops you've you've done your 30 minutes and not 30 minutes of the news <laughs> hmm? <laughs> now um there, there is a site i'll give um called yellow brick cinema it's a youtube channel and all it is is meditation type music so I suggest you just download one of their things or stream it. I create a 30 minute excerpt of that and that's your background music and your timer. So you don't, you don't have to worry about a timer. You don't want to use a alarm clock because you know, the noise will just disrupt or be rather disruptive. Right. right. Now with just one other point with the exhalation, if it goes beyond six, that's fine. The more relaxed you get, the longer the exhalation. So you may find it goes up to 10 or 12 or even 14. That's fine. It just means you're getting more relaxed. If you fall asleep, that's fine because your body needs it. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking are, about the 28 minute cycle that you think about that if you're recording, because if you took a break every 28 minutes, to breathe because we always wonder about our workflow if we stepped away every 28 minutes if your energy cycle cycling 28 minutes at a time mm -hmm. then you've given yourself a break and you go back in we could stay focused and refreshed do the breathing exercise every single time yeah rather than recording four hours well, at a time well when you consider that i mean i can record for about 50 minutes before the voice starts to get really scratchy and croaky yeah so you need to break. Focus. And, and, and for a lot, a lot of people say, "I oh, just hydrate and that'll do it." Well, no, your voice gets tired. It sounds tired. Yeah. And also, I find I don't know why other people find that you start to talk faster and faster and faster and faster because this chapter is so long. I want to get it over and done with, and there's another chapter. <laughs> <laughs> None of us would do that, obviously. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I, because when my voice was really bad, I was forced to take breaks every 30 minutes, which wasn't ideal because I thought I'm breaking the flow of my acting. But it was actually so much more natural feeling and easier. Mm. And I've stopped, I've, but it would work. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got to think that on stage, two minutes is forever, isn't it? 
Mm. Or 20 seconds can be forever on stage. So, I mean, 30 minutes, if you're narrated for solid for 30 minutes, you've, you've done a fair bit of work. Yeah. Yeah, for book. And I'm going to try that. I really like the 28 minute rule. Mm. You can do, apply that to anything in life, really. Yeah. Well, almost anything in life. That would, would work well. Okay, I, I keep digressing, but I'm okay, digressing so on that's your behalf. The, the, that's the insomnia hack. Um, I'd recommend people just practice the breathing anyway. So when you do the rest, you won't have to think about it. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's a, a cheat sheet, which I sent to Daniela, which you'll send to you, which goes through it in, in full detail. Okay. That's one style of breathing. The other one we're going to look at, we're not going to look at the, the other. We're going to look at just two this morning, not the other three. Okay. Is what they call foo. Now the foo, as in the foo, Dave Grohl and the foo fighters, if that helps you remember it. Foo is very similar to chewy, except you keep your mouth closed all the time, breathe in and out through the nose. So in this case, you keep the tongue rolled up against the roof of the mouth all the time. Rhythm is the same. You inhale, hold for four, blow out, uh, exhale for six. Hold the lungs empty for two. So it's the same rhythm. Only this time you keep your mouth closed and the breath goes both in and out the nose. And what's the difference between the two in outcome? What, like what? Uh, that's a complicated question. <laughs> um, chewy breathing is associated with the water element, which is the kidneys. Uh, the food breathing is actually associated um, with the lungs. Oh. Now the the prime emotion associated with the kidneys is fear. It doesn't mean if you do chewy breathing, you're going to be more fearful. It means it, it regulates that that emotional complex. With the lungs, it is um, grief is the prime um, emotional uh, complex associated with the lungs. And again, it doesn't make you sadder or, mel or more melancholy or whatever. It just regulates that feeling so that it's not so extreme. So that one is breathe in through your nose. In through your nose, out through your nose. And in through your nose, hold for four, out through your nose at six, and then tongue up to the tip of your mouth for two. It stays all, it stays, tongue stays for the, the nose breathing, the tongue is always up against the roof of the mouth. Oh, okay. Okay. So you can do that one like all the time. You can do that all the time. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. Now, we can incorporate this with an actual meditation. Okay. Now with meditation, you usually close your eyes. I have been to one school which keeps the eyes open and it's a very bizarre experience. But um, basically 70% of the information from the outside world comes in through your vision. So the easiest way to exclude the outside world is to shut your eyes. Yeah, I think I'd have to because I'm on our balcony and there's a fox that's been sitting here staring at me for the last 20 minutes down below on the ground. And I've been trying really hard not to like <laughs> be, be distracted. But he's just sitting there just looking at us. <laughs> so probably eyes closed for me. <laughs> yeah, so for meditation, I mean, all the styles I've done, except this one, it's eyes closed. And it's not eyes rigidly closed shut. You just allow them to close. Okay. Um, now, with this meditation we're going to do, that's the breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. Now, I'll be guiding you through this. What you do is, with each breath, you shift your focus from one energy center in the body to the next. And the centers are 
the lower dantian, which is uh, two inches below your navel, the way in, which is the perineum, the base of the spine, that bone right at the base of the spine, the Ming Men, which is opposite your belly button, basically, on your back, the kidneys, you know where the kidneys are, top of the spine, that um, projecting vertebra at the top of the spine, the jade pillow, which is the base of your skull up there, crown point, top of the head, the third eye or the upper dunt ten, which is here, the throat, the heart, and the middle dunt ten, which is the solar plexus. Does that correspond with the chakras? Approximately. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting you off course again. Go ahead. Approx approximately. <laughs> okay. In, in the Indian styles of meditation, they also have styles which move energy up and down, but they tend to move it vertically up and down the spine. Okay. Whereas this is a circuit. It takes you all round circuit. Okay. Okay. So you can do this. Uh, you'll, you'll get a cheat sheet for it from Daniela. You can do this. Um, my teachers told me that if you're doing this, an extended sense of this, you shouldn't concentrate on any one of the centers for more than nine breaths. Oh, that's considered excessive. But basically, we'll, each breath will move from one center to the next. So I'll talk you through. We'll just do three rounds. So just to get you in the, into the swing of it, see what it feels like. So if people want to close their eyes, and this is tongue on the top of the mouth the whole time and uh, breathing tongue through on the, the top nose. Of the mouth. Yep. Okay. okay. So you want to close your eyes and uh, focus on the um, two inches below your navel. Inhale. After you've exhaled and held the breath, move to the perineum, which is um, between the anus and the, the genitals, genitals. Hold the attention there. As you breathe in, move to the base of the spine. Hold the attention there. As you inhale, move to the Ming Men, which is lower in the lower back, opposite your belly button. As you inhale, move it up to the kidneys. Inhale, move to the top of the spine, the vertebra at the top of the spine. Inhale, move to the base of the skull. Inhale, move to the crown point, the top of the head. Inhale, move to the third eye, the center of the forehead. Inhale, move to the throat. Inhale, move to the heart.
Inhale, move to the solar plexus. Inhale, move to the point two inches below your navel. Inhale, move to the perineum. Inhale, move to the base of the spine. Inhale, move to the center of the lower back opposite the belly button. Inhale, move to the kidneys. Inhale, move to the top of the spine. Inhale, move to the base of the skull. Inhale, move to the crown point, top of the head. Inhale, move to the third eye. Inhale, move to the throat. Inhale, move to the heart. Inhale, move to the solar plexus. Inhale, move to the point, the point two inches below your navel. Inhale, move to the perineum. Inhale, move to the base of the spine. Inhale, move to the lower back opposite the belly button. Inhale, move to the kidneys. Inhale, move to the top of the spine. Inhale, move to the base of the skull. Inhale, move to the crown point, top of the head. Inhale, move to the third eye.
Inhale, move to the throat. Inhale, move to the heart. Inhale, move to the solar plexus. Inhale, move to the point two inches below the navel. Now you can open your eyes. Wow. Oh. That's the quietest I've been the longest probably in years. <laughs> I, okay, so if you work on this, it will increase this feeling of inner, what I call deliciousness, where you're happy in your own skin. And that's the, the natural, I'd say pleasure centers of the body. I mean, it's endorphins essentially, which will just course through your body and you'll feel more relaxed, more balanced, and less troubled by the outside world or impressions from the outside world. I wish we'd had this call yesterday before I spent a fortune on anti-aging things on Amazon. <laughs> this would have been much cheaper. <laughs> well, the, the thing with meditation is it's great stuff. When you do it, you think, wow, that's really wonderful. I must keep doing this. And that's one of the worst things you can think. I must keep doing this. I must get more of this. You Meditation like this, this style, that's one of the reasons it really appealed to me, is that if you just build your lifestyle so it just sort of happens, you just do it. You just sort of tumble in it, into it like going to bed. You know, you don't have to... It doesn't have to become a regime. It doesn't have to become something you do. It becomes but something. Too you bad just... we can't just like borrow you once a month to like narrator's guided meditation. Why don't we? <laughs> huh? Why don't we? I'm I'm thinking that could be a thing, like a narrator's guided meditation, like a twenty or thirty minute meditation, like I don't know, depending on time. Wouldn't that be great? We'd all be wandering, wandering around with like inane smiles on our faces mm. and nobody would, um, nobody would know what our trick was. <laughs> well, just, just, just bear in mind that our meditation is extremely powerful, but the results are often not apparent at the time. Like tomorrow, you might find that something happens. You think that wasn't so bad. I didn't, I didn't react the way I usually react. And that's where meditation captures you unawares. You, you find that, as I said, things don't don't trouble you. It's not as though you notice a huge shift at the time, although it feels great, you know, you feel good. But you also find that things that you're less bothered. I mean, you're not, you're not less engaged with people, but I mean, I'm a classic example. I mean, you read a bad review of one of your books. You know, when you start off, it's like, you know, someone slapped you in the face. But if you do this sort of stuff, you, you tend to think, well, bad review, you know. You become more because zen. We, you did well, yeah, for want of a better word. But I mean, we tend to catastrophize that, you know, you go through your books and you get 10 good reviews and you get one bad review. The bad review is what you fixate on. You don't think, well, you know, what, what's that, you know, less... <laughs> Less than ten percent of people think I'm crap. The, the rest think I'm I'm okay. But we don't yeah, tend to think like that. I think, in, especially in times like this. Um, quick question though. I don't want to forget. Somebody, um, Anna was wondering what was the name of the body flow meditation again? Okay, it's called the inner orbit or the microcosmic orbit. You can actually Google it. Um, Dennis is going to. Dennis says that he's going to do a tape for us or a tape and we're yep. going to look at ways to um he's he wants to get someone to narrate it 
with a calm voice that's <laughs> i do have someone in mind i i hope she'll be interested okay so yeah so he's got somebody th that's interested and he's so he might he might have something like that and we'll maybe talk about um about doing another meditation that was a, that was really good because like i've gotten all those all those make a quick buck audio meditations on audible mm. i'm the customer i've bought them all yeah and they drive me absolutely bonkers well they're all goal focused yeah i mean they're they're all about making a better you you know you there's all this thing that you you're inadequate in some way you need to be made better um dennis where, 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 whereas this is you're drawing on the natural resources in your own body and with meditation the other thing to remember is that effort is always progress if you do the work it's progress yeah you don't have to get you don't have to get good at it you don't have to become a virtuoso at it you just do it and the benefits will gradually accrue and you, you your last meditation is your best meditation um, yeah, we did it, have a comment that the best person to do your tape that they actually really enjoyed your voice, Dennis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in spite of this bizarre accent. <laughs> no, see, we all love the accent. Are you kidding? We like collect accents and yours is one of the best. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and none of us, and it's also the hardest to fake. Oh, can you do an American accent? Oh, I'm working on it. I'm working <laughs> on it. Those those R's because the my my, um, my daughter in law came from uh, North Carolina, went to school in Texas. She's been in That's Australia for nearly twenty years. Still got the Texas accent. And she said when she came to Australia, she said, "What's wrong with this people? Is there a ban on the letter R?" <laughs> because... <laughs> R. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> ah okay so i'll have to remember that doing an accent yeah, well dennis thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today it's given me a lot because my normal my normal thing is right i'll write down all the instructions and memorize them and do them really really well at the exact same time every single day it's going to go in the schedule and i'm thinking maybe that's not the best approach to what you taught us tonight well you, you want to get to like to do it should be like your cup of coffee you know you really hang out for that you know whatever your favorite caffeine poison is you know you yeah it should be something you savor and i mean the other thing with meditation is it's often tied to religious observances and that sort of thing that it's, it has a moral dimension well i guess if you want to apply it in that regard you can do that but Basically, it's, you know, it's tuning yourself up so that you're, be you're at your best, most balanced. You're using the natural energies of your own body to do this. I love it. So, I like it. That's what the, honestly, the first time that I haven't actually wanted to run a mile when the subject came up. Well, it's yeah, I mean, very interesting. You, you, and, you know, it's, um, it's sort of a pleasure you can be, it's completely guilt free, you know. It's not, it's not <laughs> like eating that packet of chocolate biscuits, you know, it's. Yeah. And it's what, what your body wants. As I said, we're all very yang, you know, we're, we're all obsessed with doing stuff and achieving stuff. Um, binging on stuff and also this time i think not only us but like the energy from the world is very yang i mean the news is on and oh the, oh yeah well the news, is, the news is yang i mean commercial radio is incredibly yang commercial radio is set up so it's designed to stop you thinking um i mean it's like you know if someone listens to your narration and says oh that was really slow and boring they're probably someone who's addicted to commercial radio, which is that perpetual yip, 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 yip. They're throwing stuff at you so fast that you have no time to think. You're not meant to think. You're just meant to, you know, it's like eating the McDonald's um, Big Mac that you, you've you had this thing and just feel a raging hunger for another one. You know, that's yeah. what they're trying to stimulate. 
Yeah. And I mean, narration is a, it's a pretty yang sort of thing. It's stretching stuff out, isn't it? It's, yeah. I might meditate invi- with my six espressos every morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> before yeah. the espressos, obviously not at the same time. Well, I mean, the espresso is good if you enjoy it. I mean, if you yeah. depended on it to, to keep you alive or to, to kick you into gear, it's, um, it's obviously not quite so good. Yeah. But, um, well, we've had the comments. We've had people saying, thank you very much, very fortuitous timing, and thank you, great stuff. And, yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us, Dennis. Um, I'll post the the writing, the, the paper that you sent me, I'll put it on the yep. group page for you guys in case you want to do that yep. insomnia exercise. So people should, people should try it and persist with it. Also good for pain. If you're suffering from chronic pain, um, I've heard spectacular stories about it curing um, severe illnesses. I'm not really? going to. I need to go and well, look into where my kidneys are because I'm not actually sure. Is that bad? Kidney, kidneys are higher up your back than you think they are. I didn't, I didn't have a they're clue actually protected where they by, were. They're actually protected by your lower ribs, the kidneys. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. okay. If you get a kidney stone, you'll know where they are. Okay. Well, I'm hoping I can figure it out without that. <laughs> yeah. um, guys, we'll put this on YouTube in case you want to go back in and do the meditation again with Dennis's yep. mellifluous voice guiding you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dennis. I hope you have a fabulous well, thank back you for all attending. feels better. <laughs> you're a miracle you're worker. No. <laughs> well, no, it's your own body's the miracle worker. It's all there. Yeah. It's all there. It's just because we have this um, idea of um, doing with our bodies what other people think we should do with them. Well, no. Yeah. You know, it's it's like being in a radio you're crazy anyway. People say you're sitting in a dark room for hours on end talking to people you'll never meet. Well, yeah, it's what's wrong with that? That's kind of natural, actually. Doesn't everyone do it? <laughs> we just get paid. <laughs> oh, the other thing with the meditation, the inner orbit is the chatter in your own head, you'll probably find that starts to diminish. I've heard that. I, I think I have a hard time imagining that. But well, med- med- meditation, I mean, like the Vipassana, the mindfulness, that appears to promote the noise in your head. It's just that you, you become more aware of it. It doesn't, it doesn't stimulate it, but you just become more aware of it. Whereas with this, because it's a physical process, don't forget it's a physical process, and it's a pleasant there's, there's, there's an actual subtle sense of pleasure associated with it. And it's not, it's not difficult, not physically difficult. Um, you know, all that sort of stuff goes away and sits in the background. Do you feel that you're a different person now from when you started the meditation journey? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it a part of your life now, just like automatic and normal? You don't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. I think that's it. I can see I mean, you, you don't, you, do, you don't, you don't have to, it's not like going to the gym. You don't have to force yourself to do it. Once you get, you know, get into the flow of it. Once you get used to it. Okay. On that note, I think we're all going to log off and get a good night's sleep, depending on where we are. You're at five in the morning over there now. Yeah. Have to get out and get that express, espresso now. Well, thanks for waking up, up and, and guiding us through this, Dennis. It was a fabulous call. So if people have any questions, they can send them to me through Daniela and we can. Well, I'm going to put a comment on the group Well, where I'll attach the, the, yeah document with the information yeah. and then if anybody has any questions for dennis um you can either comment on there or send him a messenger in facebook is that okay yeah. and, and yeah, that's fine back to you. okay thanks so much everyone thanks for joining and thank you okay. dennis. you're fabulous <laughs> have a good and, day and there'll be okay. a recording guys um following shortly okay bye bye bye, bye.